summer shaping up to be a good season for Nadine Sutherland, whose single triumphant sums up her current state of mind. But speaking with ER this week, the singer reflecting on how close her career came to taking a nosedive after allegations of drug use, rumours that continued to dog her despite repeated denials. But first, triumphant. Big It spoke to me in terms of my experiences, but I think that it's a universal message, basically directed towards people moving away from negativity, negative thoughts, low self-worth, telling yourself that you can't. This is a song that's saying that you can, and that you must show up and let your light shine, and who feels uncomfortable with that light? That is their problem right now. But it took a while for a person to reach that level of confidence, so a part of it said we're big, bold, and we're bossy without apology. Triumphant was released without a video, and it started doing stuff on its own, and VPAL is like, we need a video because the song was so powerful in terms of the reach. And you know, we end up doing a video in New York, and here it is being released, and I'm totally and utterly excited. Nadine Sutherland on course to 45 years in the music business, from teen talent show winner to the action woman alongside DJ Terra Fabulous. Babyface. We have so many things in common. And anything for you, also Sutherland Staples. Nadine perhaps treated unfairly by an industry skewed towards men, especially in the 90s and early 2000s. But nothing coming close to upending her professional existence like those drug rumors. It basically almost ruined me inside. I thought it would have passed, but it took on a life of its own. It took on a life that, I don't know, like some people wanted to believe it. Internationally, it lost credibility. Um, lost faith in myself. I wasn't suicidal, but I had suicidal thoughts because I was like, I couldn't believe that it would have taken on what it took on. But it just sort of came out of the blue? Came out of the blue. I think my energy and how energetic that I was, I don't know that lifestyle. I think that's why it impacted me because you know, everybody know my story. I'm a country girl, strict father and all that. I do nothing of that life. I was very, very naive. But I think it was, there's a lot of things that contributed to it and one was, I think it was kind of a little bit of envy. You know, people wanted to see me room. They wanted to see me in half a tree walking around naked. And probably they thought that would have happened. They would have, you know, at this stage and age, the amount of crack I must have taken, I would be beginning half a tree naked. So it never happened, so yeah. When you say it never went away, so give me an example. Like what happened? Um, I don't think right now it is there, but I mean, at that stage, when I say it never went away, was when it started, you know, people around me was like, it's part of being in the music industry, I kind of rolled past it, but it never went away. It was just like, it was fired up all across the world. Like people heard it and they wanted, it's almost like they wanted to believe it. Or they're like, the sus was so sweet because you know, drugs was so much in the popular culture in America. So them find a little Jamaican person where them could have fixed it too. They, they used to call me the Jamaican Whitney Houston. You know, and them say, all right, are the same story, sugar dead. You never felt like you needed to go public and deny those rumors? Did it several times, but to no avail. But there were people that were supportive. There were people who defended. There were people who loved me through it. There were people standing with me. There were people that were sympathetic and empathetic. And I want that also to go out there. There were people that were praying for me because it was so big, but those who were around me and could see what was happening to me that I was basically taking it inside. And I was just like, I felt I was losing my footing. You know, and then it got so bad and my parents don't even know. I don't even want them to know that I started thinking that probably I should just go. So how did you cope with it? I think it was my spirituality. After a while I became, I just started trusting God more, you know, and it, it opened up a lot of stuff in me where I just started seeking God more than anything else. And I think that's how I survived it. And just like after a while, I don't even know, you know, I'm saying this but I don't know. I'm just happy that I'm standing here triumphant over that and standing and just like, you know, whatever desires and expectation that some people have for me, 
that it just never happened. And when it was really bad, just like floods of tears on your own, what, like? I still sometimes, when I think about it, I just see, you know, I teared up a bit. I still sometimes, but I don't allow it to be in my spirit. It's like when sometimes I'm having a pity party, which we all do, I think about it and I go, like, oh, let me try to destroy me. But I don't stay there. I have health, I have strength. 45 years, people still want to see me on shows. I'm performing all over the place. Right now, it's like attached to my name is legendary. I mean, 45 years, you're on the Breakfast Club. 45 years, I'm gonna be Estelle guest in the summer. 45 years, I'm gonna be on Jam Rock. Last year when I did the New York Jerk Festival, and I walked out there, and the whole place flattened, and then I invited Sperger on, the whole place flattened. They were singing my songs. When I finished, I went home and I cried. Different kind of tears now. Like back in the days, I would cry because of what happened to me, no, I'm crying because look at what my life is. Look at what my music has done. And at 55, with a flair and defiance partly inspired by the late Tina Turner, Nadine Sutherland with lots to be happy about. It's incredible. I'm, I'm proud of myself. I'm triumphant.